This is Jeremy from the Artifacts Forge. In this video, I'm going to explain how to create, use and edit gradients in Affinity Designer. If you're using Affinity Photo or Publisher, you'll also find this useful as the process is exactly the same in each program. If you're unfamiliar with gradients, they're color transitions which fade into each other. A gradient is made using two or more colors. Here are some examples, all of which can be found in the Artifacts Forge's Gradients Galore bundle which features over 650 gradients. Follow the link in the description to see the full pack. Make sure you keep watching to the end when I'll show you how to color this complete image using gradients from the bundle. First, I'm going to explain how to create a gradient from scratch. You can apply gradients to vector shapes and type. To demonstrate, I'll make a basic vector rectangle using the rectangle tool. The rectangle is colored pink, as this is the last color I used. When a gradient is applied, it will use your last color as a starting point. To apply the gradient, select the gradient tool from the tools menu by clicking here. Then drag across the shape. A basic gradient will be applied. Hold down the shift key as you drag if you want the gradient to run horizontally. The line that appears on your shape represents the gradient. You'll see a circle for each color used, and these are called color stops. To change the color of a color stop, simply click it and then adjust the colors on the colors panel. In the middle between color stops, you'll notice a line. This is called the midpoint. Move the midpoint along the gradient to adjust the color transition. You can add more color stops by clicking anywhere on the line and then recolor them to make a more complex gradient. Extra midpoints will be added between every color stop. To delete a color stop, simply select it and hit the delete button. To change the transparency of a color stop, tap it and then adjust the opacity on the color panel. The color stops can be moved along the gradient by dragging. The two end color stops can be used to make the gradient longer or shorter. You can even extend it beyond the vector shape bounds. When extending or shrinking the line, hold down the shift key to ensure the line remains horizontal. This leads me on to the next point, rotating the gradient within the shape. To do this, simply rotate either of the two endpoints. To snap to the nearest 45 degree angle, start rotating and then hit the shift key. You'll see the gradient line jump. You can also rotate your gradient by 90 degree increments by clicking this button in the context toolbar. To reverse the direction of your gradient, click this button. Next I'd like to show you the other context toolbar options. Firstly, gradient type, which can be changed by using this drop down menu. The default gradient option is linear. This is the most commonly used gradient type. The other options are none. This clears the color so it's transparent. Solid. Use this if you want to revert back to a solid color rather than a gradient. Elliptical is a circular type gradient. To see it, we need to zoom out a little and shrink the gradient. The next type is radial, which at first glance looks the same as elliptical, but the difference is that you can change the aspect ratio of an elliptical gradient, but you can't do this for a radial gradient. I'll explain more about this later. Conical is the next option. This is better demonstrated on a circular shape. It can look really effective when using gradients with lots of colors, such as those in Artifacts Forge's holographic gradients from our Gradients Galore bundle. The final type is bitmap. 
which is not a gradient type at all. This option is used to add a bitmap texture to a shape or type. We have another tutorial explaining this. See the link in the description below. I next want to explain what this button does. The Maintain Fill Aspect Ratio button does exactly what it sounds like. It prevents or allows proportional changes to your gradient. This is only relevant when using elliptical gradients or bitmap fills. When clicked, the proportion cannot be changed. But when I unclick the button, I can adjust the proportion as required. I want to cover one final thing on the context toolbar. Clicking the gradient thumbnail here gives you another way to access most of the gradient options we've discussed so far in an off document way. This method gives users an accurate way to edit gradients by entering numbers or moving sliders rather than manually editing the gradient. You can use the drop down menu to change the gradient type, select a color stop and change its position and color. Insert new color stops. Copy color stop. This inserts a duplicate of the last stop that you've selected. Delete color stops. Reverse the gradient direction. Move a midpoint. or adjust the transparency of a color stop. The only thing you can't do here is move or rotate the gradient. For that, you'll need to use the gradient tool as previously explained. Affinity makes it easy to save gradients you've made for future use. To do this, select a finished gradient and open the swatches panel. Click the corner menu and select add application palette or add documents palette depending on preference. If you choose application palette, the swatches will be available in all documents. But if you choose document palette, the swatch set will just be available in the documents you're currently working in. Then name your palette. Then click the add current fill to palette button to save your gradient. It will now be available in Affinity Designer whenever you need it. All loaded palettes can be found in the swatch panel drop down menu here. To export your palette, click the corner menu and select export palette, then choose where you want to save it. You can save time by buying pre-made sets of gradients like the Artifacts Forges gradients galore bundle we mentioned earlier. Follow the link in the description below to learn more and get a free sample. To load a set of pre-made gradients, access the swatch panel and click on the corner menu here. Click import palette, then either as application palette or as document palette, depending on preference. Navigate to where you've saved the swatches and click on a file and then hit the open button or double click the file. The swatch set will load into the panel and is now available to use. To switch to another loaded set, Simply select one from the drop down menu here. As promised at the beginning, I'm now going to show you how easy it is to color an image using gradients. I'll again be using gradients from our gradients galore bundle. The outlines of this image were created using Artifacts Forge's Fineliner brushes. You'll find the link to both of these products in the description below. Below the outlines I've created vector shapes and I'm now going to fill them with gradients and then adjust them using the gradient tool.
and there's the finished image. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to watch our other tutorials and head over to artifactsforge.com to see our full range of affinity tools. Grab some free brushes and textures while you're there. Thanks for watching.